Good morning. I thought I'd take a break from the premonition series this morning and ask you, how is the foundation of your spiritual house doing? Uh, you know, in with earthly buildings, we have to check the foundations every so often to make sure they're not crumbling, falling apart. Jesus said that when a man hears his words and does them, he will be like a man who has founded his house upon a rock. And then when the storms come, the weather comes and beats against that house, it will not fall, for it is founded upon the rock. And I'd like to encourage you today to inspect the foundation of your house, which really is the Word of God, the foundation of Jesus Christ, who is the living Word, and to see, to be sure, all is in good repair. One of the first things that I would advise anyone is please use your King James Bible. Please at least use it as a cross-reference. I don't judge someone for not using it, but this is God's Word preserved in English. That could be something that would be something I could talk about for a long time, having studied this so greatly. But this is your foundation word, and uh, I encourage you to use it and cross-reference it as much as possible and with prayer so that the Holy Spirit will lead you directly. Also, I would encourage you, this is kind of my own thought, but I think it holds merit, and that is when you have set time aside for Bible study, Please don't use your iPhone. Use a real Bible. The iPhone is definitely a combination of the world as well as the Word. It just isn't the same thing. God wants a separation, and we need to separate for Him. You will be glad because there's a lot of bad things that come along with these devices that can be so handy in a lot of ways. I would also again encourage you to remember the context of Scripture. Not just single verses. That is how a lot of bad comes in. And uh, so it is the entire context. Remember that chapters and verses were added later. They help us with location of scriptures and memorization. And I believe God was behind chapters and verses. I think he wanted them there. But the whole thing is a context. Again, when you're looking in, in scripture, you look in say like 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians is a letter. It is one entire letter, and it was separated then into chapter and verse. So you, please look at the context that a verse is given in, then not only uh, the immediate passage, but the entire Bible. We have to take it and compare it with other scriptures. So then after this, we ought to test the spirits. When we are involved with preaching or teaching, meaning now we're, we're seeking edification from another. We need to test the spirits like the Bereans did. They searched the scriptures daily to see if these things were so that they were being taught. And that's not just a pastor quotes a verse. You look up the verse. Oh, yep, there it is. No, 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 no. I mean, make sure it's what he says it is. Look at the context and see what's going on there. Uh, the Bible tells us to test the spirits and not just to take everything for granted. And uh, that is with prayer as well as Bible study. We need God's understanding because he is a great big God, and we want to uh, discern rightly. Remember that the Bible says that uh, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. I always remember that it says it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And it really is. And so please, test the spirits and hold things up to the light of God's word. And so we're, I would also ask you just to pay attention to whatever your teacher or pastor is saying. And what about retranslation? One of the things that I see that is so rampant today, uh, I don't know if, uh, if the pastors feel it's a part of their education to show how educated they are, that they have to take things back to the Greek or Hebrew and show how they have mastered it all. Uh, in truth, again, uh, to me, the King James translators, you know, will not be equaled, let alone surpassed. And most of the things today come from corrupted translation, from revised, and not from that, from those original 5,000 plus manuscripts that were in great agreement. Nonetheless, uh, one thing I encounter sometimes is a teacher, there will be those who, no matter what, no matter what it is in the Word, they will always retranslate it. They always have to do it for themselves. And this is a part of our corrupt nature. 
I'm not saying it is in particular something evil about certain people, but this really is something to be aware of. A little, a little uh, observation of some of the depth of Greek or Hebrew isn't a bad thing, but try to beware of someone who is doing a lot of retranslating. Often when they are overthrowing doctrine or challenging strong doctrine, one of the first things they do is they will pull scripture and say it doesn't mean what it clearly seems to mean. Are they adding to the word of God? Of course, this is also written in, in Proverbs 35 and 6 and a number of other places. All the scriptures, again, will be in the description below. Are they adding to the word? What is the pastor saying? And uh, for I have a couple of examples to use. Again, one time, this was from Luke chapter 4. Uh, the verses were 16 through 30 for the entire passage. The pastor, pastor stopped at verse 22. And just to read to verse 22 makes it sound like something really positive. Jesus was in the synagogue in Galilee in his hometown. And it says how everyone was wondering at the gracious words of Jesus. And the pastor went on to say, you know, how that everywhere Jesus went, people were at ease with him. Oh, they loved these words. They were at ease with him. But in this same, in this same incident, they tried to kill him. And, and so he really blew it because he, he just chopped up these verses. And uh, later on, he did not acknowledge to the congregation the mistake he had made. Even if it was an innocent one, he kind of, he kind of covered it up. So we listen to what's being said. But I thought I'd give an example. Uh, hopefully it's a good example. You can understand it well. This one is from Luke chapter 24. I've chosen the verses 13 to 32. That would be a little bit long to read here, so I encourage you to read it. If you'll remember this, two of the disciples, this is after the resurrection, two of the disciples were on the road to Emmaus. They were talking to each other, and Jesus came up, and he joined himself to them. And it says that their eyes were holden that they would not recognize him. That's what the scripture says. Their eyes were holden that they would not recognize him. And so, as you know, they're walking along. Jesus is making conversation. Why are you so sad? And they say, well, you know, haven't you been around the last few days to know what's going on in, in Jerusalem? And so then he says, what things? And they, and they tell him. And uh, in the end, Jesus says, oh, fools, you are so slow to believe all that the prophets have written. Shouldn't Christ have suffered like this to enter into his glory? And then he expounded the scriptures to them. And then it was later, as they were eating bread, they recognized him by the eating of bread. And they said, did not our heart burn within us while he, while he brought the scripture out before us? So I think most believers take this, that Jesus, you know, was holding back their understanding of who he was, uh, you know, walking next to them because he wanted them to know the scripture. It's so important. Jesus said that the words he has spoken, they will be our judge in the last day. Nonetheless, I was at a church where the pastor was using this, using this passage. And uh, when it came to, of course, that they wouldn't recognize Jesus, he said, you know, I just think they were just so sad and so caught up in their own emotions that they just looked down like this at the road the whole time, and they never looked up to see who it was. Boy, that sounds good, doesn't it? Does that sound like what the scripture said? Did he just eliminate an act of God for a human foible? That's exactly what he did. All you have to do is think about this for a little bit. First of all, you're walking along the road with your friend, and a stranger comes up and joins himself to you. You're not going to look up to see who came over. You're not going to recognize the one that you have been walking with for the last three and a half years, day and night, all the time. Not only that, he says, you know, well, what things have been going on? You're not going to look like, well, where's this guy been? Or when he's speaking to you and your heart is burning within you, you're not going to look at him sometimes? The pastor was lying. Did he know he was lying? Probably not. What it probably is, is that was his understanding because he has no faith to believe in what the scripture says. So I encourage you to test your foundation and test the foundation of what you are being taught. Be edified in the pure word of God, and you will be able to weather the storms that come your way every day. May God bless you.